Hello, I'm Pastor Deb Stein. Welcome to online worship on behalf of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Liverpool, New York, and St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse, New York. Our churches have closed the doors to our buildings, but our ministries are far from closed. Worship continues online, allowing us to gather virtually for prayer, praise, and pause. During this time of epiphany, we enter into worship with a sense of renewal and wonder. I encourage you to participate fully in worship by listening for how the readings, sermons, prayers, and hymns are speaking to you. Join the celebration with the words of the hymns and prayers that are streamed and just calling for your voice. You'll want to stay with us to the very end of this video so that you can hear any announcements, including those that might be posted in the credits. Our recreation in baptism is an image of God's Genesis creation where the Spirit of God moved over the waters. But Mark's Gospel and the story of Acts make clear that it is the Spirit's movement that distinguishes Jesus' baptism from John's. The Spirit has come upon us, as upon Jesus and the Ephesians. God calling us beloved children and setting us on Jesus' mission to recreate the world in the image of God's vision of justice and peace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ Jesus. Our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters, immerse us in your grace, and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We'll read Psalm 29 responsively. I'll read the odd verses, and you may read the even verses. Ascribe to the Lord your gods. Ascribe to the Lord, Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is the voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like the bottom of a wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord, the Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. A reading from Acts 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid hands, his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, they were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
The Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts with wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming for me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. The Reverend Dr. David Loos asks this question. How often do you think about your baptism? I think it's a reasonable question, especially on this Sunday, when we recall Jesus' own baptism. So how often do you think about your baptism? To be honest, I didn't really think about my own baptism until I was considering seminary. I've seen pictures of my godparents holding me on that day in their arms, and I remember my mom talking about my relationship with them. Other than that, it wasn't really a thing in my family. But perhaps your family is different. Maybe you're reminded of your baptism and its importance because your family celebrates your baptism anniversary yearly. Maybe you learned to appreciate your baptism as you prepared for your confirmation, or even sometime later as an adult. For others, it may have been an important ritual for our parents, and it may become important when we marry or have children. Some do return to church so that they can have their own children baptized, if only to carry on the tradition. Dr. David Loos suggests, however, that day in and day out, very few people give baptism much thought at all. On this first Sunday after Epiphany, which is the day that we remembered wise men from the east following a star to pay homage to the newborn king with gold and frankincense and myrrh. On this Sunday, after the baby Jesus has been revealed to the Magi, we fast forward to Jesus as a young man coming to John at the Jordan for his own baptism. On this Sunday, we're invited to pause and remember and consider this baptismal story from Mark, thinking more deeply and claiming more fully the promises that God made to us at our own baptism. After reading Dr. David Lose's question and commentary for this day, I was inspired to include it in my sermon, because honestly, there may be no single event in our lives that is more important for us than our baptism. Martin Luther referred to the end of our lives as the little death, just an outward physical death. 
In baptism, he noted, we die spiritually with Christ and then rise with him from the waters of baptism into new life. In a thanksgiving for baptism right from our ELW, we proclaim, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Water doesn't do it. Even our words and our actions don't do it. Baptism is the work of God done for us, in us, and through us, loving and forgiving, blessing and claiming the one being blessed and baptized. Dr. Lowe speaks of our current culture and our ever-increasing need for affirmation. To be seen, to be liked, to be appreciated by others. In truth, this is nothing new. The ways in which we seek and receive affirmation, however, could be new and seems to be evolving and changing for many of us. Facebook gives us the chance to like people, posts, media, political parties, and the agendas of others. It also gives us the opportunity to have our own postings liked by our friends and their friends and so on. In fact, social media invites us to collect thousands of followers, fans, or friends, most of whom we have never met. Then there are those posts from seemingly innocent parties that entice us to like and follow them, their organization, and whatever it is that they represent. Advertisements are personalized by tracking everything that we look at and what we buy, targeting our particular tastes, and creating the impression that we are their most important customer. The news online works in much the same way offering information on topics we're familiar with while taking positions that they already know we'll agree upon, making us feel knowledgeable and well-informed, or so we'd like to think. Dr. Lowe's points out that perhaps the reason social media is so powerful is that it offers us an abundance of affirmation. Yet deep down, we know that this kind of affirmation doesn't really matter all that much, or at least it shouldn't. After all, many of the folks we encounter on the web don't really know us, and we don't know them. So how could their likes possibly create an enduring sense of value or worth? Still, it's hard not to wonder what was wrong with that picture we posted when only 20 people liked it, especially when another picture received over 200 likes and a few glowing comments to boot. So while our online affirmation may be somewhat superficial, for many of us, especially during this time of pandemic and social distancing, it appears to be at least better than nothing at all. We do crave recognition and interaction because we are at heart a social people. Today, in the midst of COVID isolation, we truly seem to represent God's observation in Genesis that it isn't good for us to be alone. So with the constant affirmation that social media offers, we're often soothed by the perception of being surrounded by a community of liked-minded people that value us. But could this perception just be an illusion? Sherry Turkle, MIT professor and author of Alone Together, notes that People today report feeling more connected, while at the very same time being lonelier than ever before. 
Why? Because while we may crave affirmation, what we really need is acceptance. Not just fitting in, but the exact opposite. You see, fitting in is all about changing ourselves just to be acceptable to our peer group, while acceptance is simply and crucially being valued just the way we are. This is where the importance of baptism comes in. Mark's telling of Jesus' baptism offers us a couple of thoughts to ponder. First, God's words are spoken to Jesus. They are personal, tender, and powerful. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Wrapped in these words of acceptance are the blessings of identity, worth, and unwavering regard. Second, these words come just before Jesus' temptation and the start of his ministry. The event of Jesus' baptism is the very first episode of Jesus' life that Mark shares with us. Jesus' baptism is the high point and climax of the whole life story in a nutshell. Over and over again, Jesus casts out unclean spirits, heals the sick, feeds the hungry, and welcomes the outcast. He does only for others what has already been done for him. He tells them through his words and his deeds that they too are beloved of God, with whom God is well pleased. In the darkest moments of Jesus' life, when he feels absolutely abandoned and betrayed, his story is far from over. This time of torture and death is quickly followed by Jesus' resurrection, where a messenger testifies that God has kept the baptismal promises of love and grace, claiming and identity. As Jesus continues to be accepted and honored as God's own beloved son. Today, we're in a new year, and hopefully it will turn out to be better and safer and healthier one for us all. Still, there will be low moments. We're experiencing some of them right now as COVID cases and deaths continue to increase, as we witness our nation's capital being besieged by some of its own citizens, as our country continues to be divided by hatred and vitriol. During these and other low moments in our lives, we can be comforted in knowing that the God who raised Jesus from the dead is the very same one who promised at our baptism to love and accept us always, to be with us every moment of our lives and beyond, to never let go even when we struggle to love and accept ourselves, to claim us forever, giving us new life and a new identity, beloved of God. This is why baptism is so incredibly important, because it offers acceptance from the creator of the cosmos and thereby empowers us to accept others in turn. Baptism reminds us that wherever we go and whatever we do or have done to us, God continues to love and accept us, to value and hold on to us. Baptism isn't some cheap affirmation from strangers on social media. There is truly no more important word or response. This is God's action. This is God's work for us, in us, and 
through us all. On this first Sunday after Epiphany, we remember and celebrate the baptism of our Lord, but we also pause to remember and to think about our own baptism and blessing, the day when we were marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. Through Christ, each of us is accepted just as we are, claimed and proclaimed beloved of God. In you, God is well pleased. Amen. made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. After the words, let us pray, you may respond, have mercy, O God. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, for all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards who care for all God has made, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, 
for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially those on our prayer list and those we offer now. That God shower compassion on all. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the congregation gathered virtually, for students returning to school in person and virtually, and for all who seek renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God. God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspires us in our own baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us. Wherever you are, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 God works in us and through us, using all that we give to support our ministries, including the care of those in need. If you're having a difficult time, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little more, we are deeply grateful. Let's be a blessing for others as Christ has been a blessing for us all. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer so that through our gifts, the world may receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O 
O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I encourage you all to reach out to others in whatever way you're able especially during these dark days of pandemic and isolation. Make a phone call, send an email, call them on the phone, send them a card, use social media for the way it was meant to be used. Check in with each other as a sign of God's love and God's peace for us all. And now for a few announcements. There is uh, a new Bible study on Zoom that will be starting January 14th at 
10.30 a.m. It isn't the one on 1 Corinthians because that was back ordered. So we're using a Bible study on Ephesians, um, which promises to be a very good Bible study as well. So it is still a four week study. Um, if you're interested in attending and you haven't already, please contact the office and we will be purchasing uh, the books for $5 through the office. If you or someone you know could benefit from pastoral care or contact, please let me know. I will reach out in whatever way I'm able and whatever way you're able to receive it. The rest of our announcements will be displayed before the credits. Smile. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.